Hello everyone, it's Monday and you're watching Within the Frame where we delve deeper into the top stories not only in South Korea but across the globe. I'm Kim bo -kyung. Have any of our viewers watched the latest season of Korean Netflix series The Glory? This hit drama depicting a school teacher seeking vengeance against her former bullies has not only been a thrilling view, but has also shed light on how inadequately school violence cases are handled. The issue of school bullying has been brought up as the nominee for the National Office of Investigation, Jung Sun Shin, resigned amid his son's bullying controversy. It was belatedly revealed that his son had bullied a classmate in high school, but managed to eventually win a coveted place at Seoul National University without a proper punishment. Why is school bullying so hard to eradicate? And why should the government focus on so there are no more Mundungans, the female protagonist played by famous actress Hong Hye-kyo, who was victimized by her peers? For an in-depth analysis of school bullying, we invited Professor Hong Se-ryeon at Kyung University Law School into the studio. Professor Song, welcome to the show. Good to be here. All right, and we also have Professor Park Nam Gi at Gwangju National University of Education. Professor Park, welcome and thank you for making your time. Uh, thank you for inviting me. Thanks. All right, first question to our Professor Park. Let's first have a look at the number of students who've suffered from school violence. The proportion of students who have suffered from any type of violence dropped, but again began to rise starting in 2021. Instead of physical violence, sexual and verbal violence has increased by uh, quite a lot. Now, could you elaborate more on perhaps why we are seeing this trend? Yes, the school violence has increased in 2021 as students have returned to in-person classes like you know after mostly learning remotely in 2020 due to COVID-19. And over the last decade, physical violence has decreased by 61% uh, while emotional and verbal violence has more than doubled. Uh, there could be many reasons for this, but one possibility that I think is, as awareness of bullying has increased and verbal conflicts between friends that would have been overlooked in the past are now being reported as bullying. So not like before, now anything that uh, annoying them, they say, this is bullying, so it happens like that. And it appears that more comprehensive education on mutual respect in the classroom is needed along with helping students differentiate between conflict and bullying. And sexual violence among students in Seoul has increased over tenfold in the last decade, which is a grave concern. So we need to conduct an in-depth analysis of the specific causes and circumstances leading to this increase and prepare effective measures to address the problem. And uh, one more thing is the trend. The school violence is now happening more frequently outside of school, with nearly 6% of incidents occurring off school grounds in 2022. So online violence through smartphones and applications was the most common type of, uh, and accounting for around 15% of all cases. So I think it is important to implement measures that address these new trends. Right. It does seem that in-depth analysis, analysis would be very much needed. Now, Professor Park, one more question to you. A research paper was recently released, and it says that students who experience bullying during school years are, are more likely to report high levels of uh, suicide-related behavior. Uh, it looks like school violence in childhood could have a severe impact even in early adulthood. Now, could you tell us more about this? Yeah, it's mainly because victims of bullying are not receiving adequate support, like we see the movie The Glory. Uh, so to help them overcome the mental harm, anger, frustration, and trauma they have experienced, we don't uh, support them well. So they often suffer from ongoing mental trauma, uh, which can lead, uh, lead to suicide behaviors when confronted with challenging circumstances. So it is crucial to properly interpret the meaning of victim protection. The law said victim protection, but uh, we like to understand it in a really narrow way. So I think we have to interpret the meaning of victim protection more 
like the actively so and take the active steps to help these individuals recover from their trauma maybe that is the most important thing we have to do Right, I see. We really, really need to have a proper victim protection system. Now, Professor Song, when school yeah. violence takes place, uh, a little more than 60% of cases are handled by schools themselves before being uh, referred to review committees at regional offices of education. And right. as far as I know, the school handling system has been in place since uh, the second semester of 2019. Why was it introduced and what types of punishment uh, are usually given to the perpetrators? Well, as we can imagine, the school violence can run the gamut. It could be a, a small scuffles on the ground, but it could be a very serious violence as well. So in order to deal with those things that are not serious, when we say not serious, we're talking about uh, one-off uh, incidents, uh, not uh, persisting, and the, the damages mm -hmm. or the, the injuries uh, does not go over two weeks of uh, uh, treatment. So those kind of things, uh, we are allowing the school to take care of it. I mean, it makes sense. Uh, school is where the teachers are and uh, presumably those people who know those students best mm -hmm. are there. So uh, it, it, before we get to the formal proceeding, which involves investigations and records, uh, permanent nature, mm -hmm. uh, we're giving the opportunity for the education institution and the local uh, means of uh, uh, dispute resolution a chance. Right, I see. Now, Professor Park, cases yes. that are not settled by schools are sometimes referred to the review committees, like I said before, at regional offices. And according to the Education Ministry's guidelines, the committee uh, should be held within three weeks, yet it is said that most cases are delayed as there are so many cases to review. Is this true? <sighs> Yes, it is true that in 2022, out of 10,000, around 10,000 cases, around 30% of the cases were not handled within the guidelines set by Minister of Education. Especially in Seoul, about 70% failed to meet the four-week deadline. Uh, I think the reason for the, this delay is that the committee has not increased its number of members despite the significant rise in school violence incidents. To improve the situation, surely it is necessary to increase the number of committee members, allocate more budget for its operation, and hire more uh, support staff. When I say like this, then they say they don't have money, but actually the government keeps saying education budget is too much. So I don't know what's, what which is true. So I really want the government to spend money for this. Right. I mean, apart from the budget issue, I really uh, I cannot agree more that we need to have more members of the committee. Now, Professor Song, so even if there is a review committee, more mm -hmm. perpetrators get a mere slap on their wrist, and that is what I heard. Many are just banned from approaching the victim or are just ordered to write a apology letter. And right. yeah, hardest punishment is to be sent to another school, but that is not a usual case. Mm -hmm. uh, why is the punishment so light? I mean, is it because uh, the school bullying is hard to prove? Well, that's part of it. Uh, there are nine levels of punishment, as mm -hmm. you said, uh, starting with the written apologies and all the way to the exper expulsion from the school. Mm -hmm. But that depends on uh, whether that decision can be made competently, which means an investigation has to take place. Mm -hmm. So I think there is a little bit of a structural issue here where uh, the, the review relies on the investigation or the testimonies from the teacher. Mm. But the teacher might not be inclined to engage uh, him or herself to, to uh, fully, or they could feel that, well, if this thing gets too serious, mm. that reflects upon their ability right. to teach or take care of uh, students. So in that sense, there is not enough incentives uh, there but also there is a, a, a element where if the decision is made in a severe cases, then the record could remain on the, the, the aggressor's uh, record on two years or, or, or on a permanent basis, mm. which kind of in their opinions, rightfully so, can ruin their lives. Mm. I mean, it, it will affect their advancement to uh, higher education and so on and so forth. So parents uh, tend to kind of 
fight tooth and nails. Right. <laughs> right. So it gets complicated. Mm -hmm. uh, not enough evidences could be uh, coming forward. So I, I think those uh, contribute to kind of lower level of punishment. Right. Now, one more, more question to you, Professor Song. So, like, uh, I think I have heard uh, for the previous question already, but some parents even sue the victims mm -hmm. of f filing judicial reviews with the administrative court when the decision from the committee comes out. And, of course, there could be some people who wanted to prove their innocence, but right. I heard there are some cases uh, where parents deliberately use the system. What are their intentions here? Right. As you said, it, it's their right to use the the judiciary right. to to uh, prove their innocence mm -hmm. if it's your warrants, but uh, I think there is also concern that it is becoming kind of a legal tactic. Mm. Uh, lawyers could say that well, your your son or daughter, uh, if it's in trouble, will bury the case mm -hmm. uh, until the 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 Supreme Court uh, uh, deals with it. Uh, you'll be long over after your uh, college uh, entrance process is done. So uh, even people are saying that it's becoming a little uh, industry among the law firms mm. who would be specializing in this area so that they'll file the appeal after appeal all the way to the, to the Supreme Court so that sufficient uh, years or period passes and the impact of that adverse record is minimized. Mm. So it's an unfortunate situation, but that's how it is. Yeah, uh, it is there. truly unfortunate to see how this system could be used as a, like you said, legal tactic. Right. right. Now let's tur uh, turn to the discussions that are made to reduce the number of school bullying cases. Professor Park, when perpetrators yeah. become subject to disciplinary action, it is written on their school records. And originally, those school violence records could be raised, but the law was revised so that it stays for two years. But some are saying even a two-year expiration date is not enough. And one lawmaker proposed bill to extend the expiration date up to 10 years. Some agree, while some don't. What are your thoughts? Uh, at first, we have to think about the purpose of the School Violence Prevention Act. It is not to punish students. Uh, it is to protect the human rights of students and foster students as health member of society by first, protecting victims, second, guiding and educating perpetrators, and third, mediating disputes between victims and uh, perpetrators. So here, when we say nine different kinds of punishment, but actually it's not punishment. It could be, but it's a guiding and educating perpetrators. Our purpose is guiding. So that's why students not that scared about those things. Only what they scared about is some of them is entering university, the school records. But here, uh, in order to address the school violence, surely it is important to impose strict punishment on repeat offenders. However, extending the record to 10 years for a single instance of violence will only result in a surge of lawsuits. It will not be that effective. Uh, the reason is, if the perpetrator of the victim come from the wealth families that prioritize their children's education, they may file a lawsuit on behalf of their children. On the other hand, if they come from low-income families who may not have the resources or knowledge to pursue legal action, then they may face difficulties in seeking justice. Then let's think about it. This can increase the anger and frustration of both the perpetrator and the victim who couldn't lead the lawsuit, then potentially leading to long-term psychological trauma and antisocial behavior in adulthood. So instead of focusing solely on punishment, society should prioritize the objectives of School Violence Prevention Act. So this requires conducting a thorough analysis of why this act has not been effective and allocating sufficient resources to address any shortcomings. So to reduce the school violence, we should pay more attention to improving students' communication and conflict management skills and social skills. And fundamentally, we need to ease 
the excessive competition system of our society and we have to build a system of mutual cooperation. That's what I think. Right, I see. Now, Professor Park, uh, while you were answering the question, you already mentioned how students are mostly worried about going into entering the universities. Mm -hmm. And so I need to tap on this another hotly debated issue. In South mm -hmm. Korea, as we all know, there are two ways for students to get into the university. One is sushi uh, that focuses on school grades and extracurricular activities. And, and the other is Jungshi, which is based on uh, what is called Sunung, right? Uh, sushi takes yep. into account any records of school violence, while Jungshi does not, as far as I know. And thus, the education minister said that he's considering to have universities take school violence records into account, even for the Jungshi track. Now, what is your uh, thoughts on this? Okay, when foreigners listen to sushi, then they may think about the food sushi, but it is not. I just <laughs> right. make and the proposal of having university take school violence records into account for the Jiangxi track may cause some concerns, but I think it might not effectively reduce school bullying cases. So less than one third of students are admitted to highly competitive universities and departments, which means the majority of students who have school violence records will not be affected by this measure. So students who are admitted to highly competitive universities and majors enjoy many privileges and opportunities. And they like to become leaders of members of the upper class after graduation. So therefore, uh, even before, a long time ago, when I published a book about the education world in 2003, I said it is essential to assess the student's character, morality, leadership, quality, and willingness to serve, care, and share with others to those students. So if selection is solely based on grades, there is a risk that self-centered individuals may enter those prestigious universities and just take advantage of the benefits. After graduation, they may use their status to monopolize or even exploit resources. So thus, I believe it is necessary for highly competitive colleges and universities to include a process to evaluate whether a student leads a life of service, caring, commitment, and communication, not just a record of a sort. I think we should have, uh, we should go that direction, I think. Right, I see. Now, Professor Park, uh, most discussions we're having here, you know, are basically focused on handing out more serious disciplinary action to perpetrators. But what we need to take into consideration the most is setting a proper protection system for school bullying victims, like you have mentioned before. What does this country lack and on what should the country focus on more? Yes, like I told you, that's the most important thing, but we don't put money and resources over there enough. So although there is a legal process in place for the recovery of victimized students, there are many instances where the existing system fails to work effectively. We see that in the movie uh, Glory. So it highlights that the need for system improvement. So one such area is the necessity to redesign the system to prioritize the victim's needs, such as ensuring their right to learn and maintaining their friendship and overcome frustration, anger, and trauma. So in cases where the existing system is not functioning well, we need to analyze the reasons and take appropriate actions. Often, the necessary system do exist, but suffer from a lack of funding, staffing, or organization, like I said. Government keeps saying we have enough money for education, but actually this kind of part, they say no money, no steps, so they are suffering, and they couldn't support these students, they said. So, and there is, a, for instance, the law requires the establishment and operation of an outside of school organization for students who experience school violence, but actually they don't use it well and they don't like the, 
by budget, they don't support them well. So it's not fully utilized. Even though it exists, it doesn't work. So government this time should see the, in detail in the field what's the problem. That's the best way to solve or lessen down the problem, I think. Right, I cannot agree more. Now, Professor Song, I think this could be our last question. Mm -hmm. uh, from a legal point of view, uh, how should laws be revised to prevent more victims from suffering this uh, tragic school bullying? Uh, I think that the law should reflect that the comple complexity of this issue. I, I agree with Professor Park mm. that we have to understand more the root causes of how, how this is happening. I mean, our school yard is, is structurally a very competitive environment to where mm. uh, mm. growing students uh, who are not really adept at handling their emotional, hormonal changes well. Right. So uh, we need more resources to guide them through. Mm. For example, I think that we need more counseling uh, resources mm. uh, to put into school. Now, there are some, but not enough. Uh, right. Mental health is not something that do we, uh, as a society as a whole, have not really uh, fully uh, focused on. So those kind of things need to uh, pre uh, take place before we say something about being tough on this kind of issues. Mm -hmm. I worry about, you know, one strike, you're out, a kind of tough messages are a politician's handy tools, right. but uh, very weak on really solving the problem mm -hmm. and really caring for not only the victims, mm -hmm. but those uh, students who are uh, who made mistakes mm -hmm. uh, should be able to kind of rehabilitate their tendencies and learn more. And uh, I think that should be the function of the true schools. And uh, we need to put some more resources and more focus on it. Right. So before we, you know, come up with uh, measures, we need to first, like you said, think about the complexities of what we're uh, handling, what we are trying to tackle it, right? Right. Right. Unfortunately, this is all the time we have for today's edition. But of course, thank you, Professor Song and Professor Park for your insights. We really appreciate them. Thank, thank you. you. All right, that's all for Within the Frame tonight. We will be back tomorrow with more in-depth stories. Thank you for watching and goodbye.